right. Are we streaming? Yes, we are. Awesome. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. Let's see. I hope my mic is worrying, uh, working right now. I can't hear myself. Uh-oh. Did we just glitch out? Okay. I think... I think we're working. Awesome. Um, so, welcome to the live stream, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Um, we are going to give away the first Polaroid camera today, and I have it here with me. And I have the winner. I just completely lost what I was going to say. Um, I do need to plug in my laptop real quick. Um, but I plan on doing a little bit of Lightroom photo editing, and we're going to talk a little bit about the photo challenge, the sky photo challenge that we did not too long ago, and what else? That's about it. I'm going to show you guys some of the entries from that photo challenge, or the, um, I guess, kind of the homework assignment, because there was no real winner or loser, as I would say, in these photo challenges. Hey, what is up? Mic is good? Awesome. Um, glad you're here, Lou. Um, but yeah, we're going to edit in Lightroom just for a little bit, skim through some photos, um, and let's get right into that. Let me open up the Lightrooms real quick. What's up, Shane? Welcome. Glad you guys are here. Let's see. All right, so I'm going to get over into Lightroom real quick. Always a pain trying to live stream, pay attention to the chat, and do all that fun stuff. So let's see. Let's go over into Lightroom here real quick. All right, so... Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm thinking it is eight o'clock my time. I'll wait for a couple more people to join and then let's say 830 my time. So in about 28 minutes, we'll actually do the giveaway. Um, talk about the camera a little bit, but first I wanted to talk about our um, sky photo challenge real quick. So Let's go over, let's take a look at those entries. We'll get rid of this live stream. So first of all, I wanted to start out with Shane's photo. Let me just make sure you guys can see that real quick and make sure we're streaming the desktop. Yes, we are. There we go. Okay. So first of all, here's Shane's photo. And he goes by Shane on YouTube, so he's nice and easy to find, and he is in the live chat right now, so it also makes him easy to find. And then also, going by his YouTube name, this is Cloudy Knight, and I'm sure he'll be in the stream at some point tonight. A nice photo, I believe he took this on his Canon AE1, if I'm not mistaken. And lastly, we will go to my photo and I thought this was something super interesting um, if you take a look these all have very similar compositions you can see Shane's photo has that kind of lower third horizon right there you got lower third horizon and then right here kind of lower third horizon and then another interesting thing I thought um, just kind of off center not quite in a third my subject was kind of this little ridge right here, not necessarily the clouds, but I thought your attention really comes to this ridge right here. So take a look at that, and then I'm gonna transition over to this image. Your focal point is right about there, and then I'm gonna transfer over to the next image. And look at that, focal point is right about there. So I thought that was a kind of cool thing. I feel like compositionally, we all shot extremely similar photos. Um, the upper two-thirds of the image is all sky and then we each have our 
kind of main focal point or main subject point kind of right here. Here's the center line, so it's just off center and um, almost exactly in the same spot. So I just thought that was kind of cool if you flip back and forth between all these compositions are just extremely similar. So again, I thought that was neat. Thank you guys for participating. Um, I want to do a lot more of these little photo challenge, not necessarily competitions. It's more just to challenge your eye. And as we go, I'll start making these a little bit more difficult. Um, I have some portrait challenges that uh, I have some ideas for in the very near future. So speaking of the sky challenge, I'll show you guys just to kill a little bit of time, kind of uh, how I went through, how I edited some of these images that I did and some of my um, other edits in addition to these. So let's open up Lightroom real quick. All right. Yes, Cloudy, if I'm not mistaken, has started his own YouTube channel, I think. Um, but yeah, he's definitely on here. He joins the chats all the time. Um, so you can see here, I have my uh, my images up in Lightroom. Here is, for instance, this one before and after. I really had to crank the contrast to get the detail out of this particular image. It was just a super hazy day and I was kind of far away from this mountain in particular. Um, I believe this was the one. So this was the one I kind of selected as my final um, photo challenge assignment entry. And I'll just buzz through a couple of these. I thought a couple of them turned out kind of neat. Um, I decided to go for black and white, um, kind of inspired by that Ansel Adams um, editing style, editing feel. I thought it was kind of neat. Um, let's see. Again, I didn't edit all of these. They didn't all turn out that great. Tried to go for some layering right there. And then here I tried to switch it up because um, the challenge was sky and the challenge was to do kind of an interesting composition. So I threw, if we throw our crop marks on this image, whoop, that is compare. I don't want to do that. Let's go back here, whoops, to our develop tab. And I always forget the shortcut, crop overlay R. I always forget the shortcut. Hey, what is up? Welcome to the chat, glad to have you here. So you can see here, this is my crop. I did take the image with the horizon down here quite low in my image. I wanted to really emphasize this gradient from dark to light in the sky. And then you kind of scroll your eye, not scrolls down, but travels down here, gets caught in this area. And just thought it was an interesting composition. Um, same thing with these, I really tried to go for kind of a minimalist composition. I guess I could have done that a little bit better. Maybe if I did like a 10, 15 second long exposure with some neutral density filters and got these clouds to smooth out. But I guess I could have done that in Photoshop as well. Um, here's another one. And just a couple more real quick. Again, same thing, I went for that kind of lower thirds composition, a centered peak right there. To be honest, in this one, not that interesting. This photo kind of bores me. I gotta do some dust cleaning. This one, same thing, the horizon's kind of neat. Um, it's always neat when you have something interesting going on on the horizon, but what would have really gathered or grabbed somebody's attention or my attention would have been something happening on this horizon because if you just have kind of a straight horizon and nothing going on in your image, nothing really grabs your attention. Like Shane's image, for example, had that nice sunrise or sunset going on right there and it broke up this monotony 
of the horizon or his horizon and just made his image look a little bit nicer. So let's take one of these images. Um, I guess we'll take the one maybe that I submitted for the challenge. Let's see, what's the one next to it? We'll nab one of these raws. Here you can see here in this particular image, I was quite a ways away. You can see I have a crane there and we can go through real quick. I'll just do some basic editing, but obviously I shot in raw. This is very flat and it looks even more flat with the haze. So let's go for a super wide crop. Let's go even wider than that, two by one. Let's crop out that crane, say goodbye to that. And let's figure out a good composition. I kind of like this. Um, you have your horizon here on the third. You can just see this little bit of um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anytime uh, we're going to be doing plenty more of these photo competitions, so don't worry about it right now. Um, we will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. I almost didn't get the opportunity to even do this photo challenge because I am extremely lazy as well. Um, but don't worry. I think. Um, so the giveaway we're doing tonight, I added up all of the points. Um, I had a really ridiculous point system for essentially every time someone you know commented. Um, a good comment on my videos as you can see in my actual giveaway post a lot of people just spammed um, a lot of stuff and I kind of expected that on my first giveaway video so I didn't count any of those comments basically but if people made you know thoughtful comments on my other videos I counted those up I counted how many times people showed up to live streams participated in photo challenges essentially you know December January and February um, kind of the last quarter and added all those up and the most active person um yeah so lots of stuff added up um but i added up everyone who participated in all those videos and um you know being in the discord server and stuff like that and the most active person was the one that ended up winning this um it is a polaroid land camera and um really excited to give this thing away i'm really excited to see if um i don't know if they make film for this thing anymore but i'm curious to see what someone could potentially do with this and even if you don't get it to work maybe you um i don't know maybe you figure out a uh, cool place to use it as a desk prop and you can just kind of add a camera to your desk so I'm going to get back to editing this image right here. I'm going to get rid of this little film strip so we can see the image a little bit better. And let's see, it was very blue, so I don't know. I don't want to white balance. There's not much I can white balance off of. Even if I were to white balance off this cloud, it's going to turn my image very yellow. Don't like that. I think that's why I ended up going for black and white in the first place. So. I'm going to take highlights down just a hint. It's not going to be able to do too much. Most of my images, or most of my image you can see, histogram is still in um, up there in the highlights. So just to start off, I'm going to get my image in a workable area. Um, let's see. So which... Lou, which, um, so I still have a land camera as well. I have a couple of them. Um, let's see. Yeah, we might have to, uh, I'll discuss with you some film later because, um, I have more than one of this version of camera. This is, I think it's called the Zip. It's the one that's in the thumbnail, uh, made in the UK because it says it takes, um, use only type 87 film for all pictures um i was doing a quick search um for type 87 film i couldn't find any um maybe there's some stuff on ebay that's left over uh from whenever this thing is from i don't know much about it <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Um, well, while you're looking, I'll keep cruising on this photo a little bit. So what I'm going to have to do, turn down the blacks a bit. And as you can see, my image is very flat. Um, oh, yep, there is definitely a Polaroid back for the 67. I got to get one of those things eventually. Um, really looking closely at getting one of those um, Amiya cameras. Only problem is that they are expensive um, and they're difficult to find used because everyone that has one likes to hold on to them essentially forever. So, uh, and get some coffee. And as I said, did it backwards. Yes, the other one is the Polaroid Original 600s. Um, does work with a new film. Sweet. Um, that would be cool if I could get this guy. I haven't tested it yet. I mean, I know the shutter works. Like, I hope you guys can hear that. Shutter is still very clean, very crisp. This one in particular, I know, takes double A batteries. I'll open it up here. Um, right before the giveaway and we'll take a look at it. Um, I really don't know much about this one. I'm going to do some research because like I said, um, I'm going to give this one away, but I have an, another identical one that um, I'll be keeping for myself just to have, you know, as a part of my collection. But I'll definitely do a video on that when I learn a little bit more about it. So just going to do a little bit more editing for about 15 minutes till we um, give that guy away. But yes, yeah, 600, um, that 600 version film is still being sold. Um, you can pretty much get it anywhere. It's all over Amazon, <clears throat> all over eBay, all over the Polaroid site. It's, uh, it is everywhere. So let's see. This is one of the nice times I can use this nice dehaze slider. And it's really neat. I can start seeing these little cloud wisps, um, That'd be kind of cool. I don't know how exactly that will work. Um, yeah, no idea how that would work because I know you have to, to get the film to develop, it has to, you know, roll through and does it need some sort of motor or does it have a motor that pushes it through and distributes the little developer that's inside of it? Um, Yes, that is definitely correct. The eye type doesn't have the batteries built in. Um, yep. I've actually seen some things where I guess the eye type is like two or three dollars less expensive. And if you really want to save, um, you know, two or three dollars, which I hardly find it worth it, there are people that keep their old um, 600 cartridges with the batteries because the batteries last a while. Um, they keep their old cartridges, and then in a dark spot, they just take the eye type and they load it. You know, they take it out of their um, the eye type cartridge and load it back into a 600 cartridge. And you've essentially it's the film is the exact same. It's just the battery. So yeah, that uh, it is getting crazy. So a little bit more editing just for funsies. Start bringing those whites back in here, and I think it's kind of cool. You can, yeah, it's. I think, uh, I think that'd be fun to try. I personally probably won't, but um, I think that would be a neat endeavor. And if somebody made a video on it, I would definitely watch it. Um, so yeah, this is essentially what I was doing to my shot, and you can see it looks okay, but it's just so blue hit that letter V on the keyboard, turn that sucker black and white. And I honestly, I think the black and white becomes a lot more dynamic because, yeah, nothing you can really do with this. Um, let's see, 10 and 10. Oh, yeah, that is absolutely smart. I do the exact same thing. I keep, um, I keep one or two old cartridges with me. Um, so every time I go thrift shopping, whether it's Goodwill or anything like that, 
I always keep one of these, um, I got it with me somewhere, one of the cartridges. So yeah, you can see if the flash works, you can see if um, the motors work, stuff like that. Sometimes I'll even take, you know, um, a full cartridge with me and just see, you know, are the rollers clean, you know, anything like that. So yeah, there's the black and white. The blue just kind of, it was too blue, didn't feel all that dynamic. And this is where I'll start playing with how far do I want to crush, you know, these black values. The image is still, you know, pretty darn gray. Might bring my shadows down. Maybe add a tiny bit of texture, maybe take it away to make it actually like that, kind of like an Orton effect. It makes it a little bit glowy and smooth. And play with clarity. Just a hint to bring, you know, those blacks down. A little bit more dehaze. And let's see, bring my yep, exposure up a little bit. When your images are this flat, shooting through fog and haze and clouds, it gets super difficult. But that's super close. You can see the before and the after. That's super close to this one. Only difference in this one is it's quite a bit brighter. I want it to feel like you were up in the clouds a bit. So add some of those whites back in. There we go. Some of that contrast. And again, look at we took our histogram from being in this tiny little flat region right here. And then we spread out our histogram across the entire graph. There we go. I like some nice bright whites in here. These clouds, nice bright and white. And then our shadows, a little bit gray. That's cool. You can see some little radar antennas or something going on up here. Still a little bit gray, but this might be one of those cases where we don't really have a super deep black value just because, you know, we're shooting through clouds and layers of haze it might look weird if you know it's super you have some you know super dark black area it just doesn't necessarily fit the image so it's playing with that back and forth of what looks good what's not clipping over here on my histogram um, yeah i agree black and white is probably the best usually go in and mess with my curves as the last thing i do and then one thing I've noticed with the Z6, and it's kind of weird, um, whenever I import my images into Lightroom or Camera Raw, the Z6 always turns my sharpening way down, and it turns the radius up. I'm not sure if that is some sort of a color profile, something or other, and the noise reduction is always different. Sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's 10, 20, 30. I don't know what does that. To be honest, I'm going to have to do some research, but I always like to do some masking with my sharpening and detail, holding either Option or Alt. And all I really want to do is sharpen that horizon, um, any hard lines, and those clouds. So I'm going to let go of Alt, and now you can see the sky is not being sharpened, but these hard edges are being sharpened, and that's what I want sharpened. I want the sky to say, I want the sky to be nice and soft. Looks pretty good. Pull up that detail a touch. But then I might actually bring up the noise reduction. About there. I want to make sure that I've gotten rid of there was a bit of noise in the sky just because I was, you know, pulling apart my histogram and really pushing this image. But I think that looks good. The sky looks really soft. Um, nice wispy clouds and I definitely see sky when I think of this image I'm gonna take my highlights down a bit now yeah I've um, sometimes when you tweak your image too much you just kind of lose the ability so much of my image is in the highlights right now taking my highlights down isn't doing too much um, and I got to play with the contrast or exposure a touch. These clouds just seem a little bit bright, but that's not too bad. Um, there's just some nice movement here in the image. Um, not that this photo is all that great, but 
I do like the way the edit turned out again, you know, before and after, before, um, very flat and the after looks much better. Um, I'll show you guys some of the other before and afters. Um, I did like this one too. This was the other one. I had three that I kind of picked as my top three for this um, challenge. Here's the before of this one. Again, very difficult to see through all that haze. Um, the sun rays just bounce off the haze. They are diffused through the haze, and it's just so hard to see the mountains. I had to do quite a bit of work, and I did use some gradiated filters, I believe. Yep, I used one on the bottom. See my mask overlay here. I brought up some of the whites in the bottom just to emphasize these clouds. And on the top up here, I darkened the sky just to give it a nice gradient. So again, here's my before and my after, all done in Lightroom. And let's see, I've got about five minutes till we're going to give this camera away. Let's check out one of these other images here. Yeah, one of these other ones I was gonna was gonna be my third image that I was gonna submit for this challenge. Yeah, one of these three was gonna be the third one. I think I think it was this one. I just I thought the composition was interesting. I liked it. Um, here is the before of this one again. Very flat. You can see the clouds pretty well. Obviously, a nice blue sky, pretty clear. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Definitely, uh, take a camera with you hiking. Um, yeah, I've been super busy, busy too. Trust me. I understand. Um, I'm going for a hike, I believe this weekend. And it's always hard when I go for a hike. I always feel kind of that pressure that I have to make a video. So I'm wondering, you know, do I take my GH5 with me? Do I take, um, my Canon AE-1 with me, shoot some film? Should I take a Polaroid with me? Should I take my Z6 with me? Because um, it's usually it's pretty difficult to make more than one video on a hike. Um, one is usually what I can do, but yeah, here, um, here I wasn't really able to make a video about this one. So but yeah, I think my next one, I have two rolls of film being developed with my, um, uh-oh, uh-oh, what did I hit? Whoops. Um, yep, okay, that's fine, whatever. Um, yeah, I just shot two rolls two weekends ago on my Canon AE-1. Um, I'm gonna switch over real quick. Do, 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 do. Or I'm gonna do this. Um, yeah, so I had a couple rolls that I shot through my Canon AE-1. I shot a roll of Kodak 200 or 400, and I shot a roll of Fuji 400. I was just going to compare some of the color and kind of see, uh, the only Fuji I've shot is through an old Ryko camera, my crappy little, um, my little red mystery camera. I think my camera's on. Let's see. Yeah, my stream camera's on. So this guy, if you got to watch my mystery camera video, shot a couple rolls of Fuji through that. Wasn't a huge fan of it. Didn't take uh, didn't take that great of images, but um, I know the images looked a lot better when I shot with my um, Kodak Pony camera, and I know they look great when I shot them with my Canon. Uh, AE1. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the Z6, absolutely sweet. Um, I've bought a lot of, I have a lot of Nikon glass already for it because I used to have a D5 and a 750. Now I have a D4, an 810, a Z6, um, handful of cameras. Um, yep, Ektachrome is definitely um on my list um i want to get some ilford 120 as well and um yeah some 
black and white Ilford. I think all they make is black and white at this point. At least all I've seen is black and white. Um, get some 400, um, 120 film from them. Shoot that on a Kodak Brownie is my plan. Maybe for this weekend, maybe for another weekend. I'm actually waiting for another snowstorm to come through Colorado so that um, I can get some good snowy pictures. I know that's going to be difficult um, to get good snow photos um, with some of those older cameras like my Brownie and my uh, my old Kodaks and stuff like that just because I, I have no idea what the aperture is on these guys. Actually, I'm going to grab one of these cameras real quick. Give me about two seconds and I'm going to grab one of these guys and show you guys some of my brownie cameras real quick. All right, let's close Lightroom real quick. Yeah, Lou, I'm excited to see that um, some sort of video on Ilford. I haven't done much research on it, but it is definitely something that I need to take a look into. So um, my face is back. I'm trying to close Lightroom right now. It's frozen. Oh, it wants me to back it up. Yep, sure. Okay, so here in just a second, I'm trying to get all my windows organized. Okay. So here are a couple things that I have that are kind of neat, and I will be doing videos on these. I will be shooting film through these, putting a couple of rolls um, through these guys. So here is um, an old Kodak Brownie Jr. Let me line that up with the light so you guys can see it. This thing is really cool. I honestly, if this didn't work, I bought this sucker just because of the um, like the Art Deco look that the front of this thing has. It's just so awesome. You have um, two ground glass viewfinders on this. You have one here on the top, and that is if you're shooting, you know, vertical portraits. Um, then if you flip the camera all horizontal like or in landscape mode um, you have another viewfinder right here on top and it's gonna be super difficult to see but I'm gonna turn on my phone light and kind of show you guys the viewfinder it's just really neat how this works um, these brownie cameras they have these two little windows right here there's a little mirror in there and a piece of ground glass on top so that if I turn on my camera light right here and I'll see if you guys can see this at all so there is the ground glass viewfinder and actually you can see it a little bit on the bottom right here you can see my bottom menu bar on my MacBook but if I let's get this lined up this is difficult because this is all backwards but you can see my phone light right there is shining onto that piece of ground glass or here we can just see my phone screen down there. But I thought that's just kind of neat. Um, you might be able to see more reflection than anything. But yeah, you can see right down at the bottom, when my finger's not in the way, my Mac menu bar, which um, you can see through here. So you just hold this guy down here like this. You look through your viewfinder, and then you have your lens right here this is so difficult because everything is backwards on the screen <clears throat> but yeah my shutter still works um, love the sound of that <clears throat> and then I also have a coronet brownie style camera as well um, this thing is awesome and this this camera is really cool. All right, what am I verifying? Let's see. Um, ba, 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 ba. Lou, worst channel on YouTube, definitely. 
absolutely. <clears throat> 100% verify. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this camera's awesome. I found this at an antique store called a Coronet. I bought it, um, actually about five minutes before I found, maybe an hour before I found this camera stashed in the back. But like I said, I bought this one. I think it takes, um, film that's not made anymore, uh, called 620. I might be able to find some that somebody's hoarded for a while, but I bought this mostly because of the Art Deco face and the design is really cool. I'll do a video on that eventually. I'll try and put some 120 film in that. I think that's doable. But this one for sure <clears throat> is a 120 camera. Again, shutter. Still works. Still nice and nice and slow. <laughs> um, but when they used to take portraits with old, old, old bellows cameras and stuff like that, the film speeds weren't that sensitive, or excuse me, the film wasn't that sensitive. Um, and something I learned, they would have to keep their shutter open, um, especially if they didn't use flash. Super old cameras, they'd have to use extremely, extremely slow shutter speeds. And if they were taking a portrait, they would actually rig people up with metal pipes. So um, the most famous portrait of Abraham Lincoln and I'm not going to bring it up right now, but um, there's only a few portraits of Abraham Lincoln. But um, sand down the top. Yeah, that's what I've heard um, with the 120. Yeah, um, there's some slight modifications that you have to do, and um, you have to pay a little bit more attention when you're shooting, I think. Um with like your markers and stuff and getting your film lined up correctly if I'm not mistaken but I'll do a video on that and you guys will learn as I learn so um bit off topic um so Derek that's actually an interesting question and I'll get back to this Kodak or Coronet in just a second here uh, fun little thing it actually has a little adjustable lens that is almost impossible to see here but this lens is actually adjustable it twists in and out it's kind of hard to get a grip on but I just thought that was super neat and this was the first camera of the day that I found when I was doing a little hunt and I just thought it was kind of cool couldn't leave this guy in the camera store or excuse me in the thrift antique store so yeah, Derek, that is an interesting question. I have a lot of camera bags. Um, so the military actually, ah, that's a hard question. The military buys us our camera bags. Um, I had the opportunity of, um, yeah, sorry. This is gonna be a super complicated answer to a very simple question you asked. Um, depending on Everywhere you go is different in the military. Um, where I'm at right now and most of the places I've been stationed at, they buy us low pro bags. Um, if you go to a place that, you know, a larger um, unit or a larger base with more people, they usually have more money, better funding, so you get, you know, better camera gear. So I had the option of, you know, essentially picking out some of the camera gear that I wanted. And then I use some of that in addition to, you know, my own camera gear that I bring to work. Um, for a while, I was at a place that didn't have good funding and didn't have a lot of people, super small base. Um, so I was actually shooting with my own camera bag, which was my BP-150, um, also made by Low Pro. I have a couple reviews on that one. The most recent video is the better one because the other ones were made two years ago and they sucked. But, um... I have a newer review on that bag that's pretty good, but I was using my own camera gear for a while, like my GH5, a lot of my own lenses, um, some of my old Nikon glass um, adapted to the GH5, but where I am here, um, we have some pretty decent camera bags that are bought for us that are low pro. I'm using my personal bag again just because I like my BP-150 for quick shoots. 
Um, I have some quick over-the-shoulder sling bags um, that I use. Um, again, low pro as well. I think they're like 100 slingshot and a 200 slingshot. Um, and then I have a larger 300. Um, I believe it's an all-weather photo classic 300. I think I've done a review on that. That was the bag that I had in my... What video is that? I've done 150 videos at this point, so it's hard to remember. But um, I think it's the Photo Classic 300 All Weather is the bag that I use right now, um, which is a personal bag of mine. Um, just because I like it, it's more comfortable. It only cost me, I think it was like a hundred bucks, a little more than a hundred bucks, with some um, discounts that I ended up getting. But um, yeah, so. The military, nobody really makes a military camera bag. The military doesn't even make their own camera bags. If they did, they would be contracted out to another company like Low Pro, for example, or SOC, um, some Sand Hill bag company that makes all our military backpacks. But we use Low Pro, we use name brand stuff, and I know that was like a 10 minute long, ridiculous you know, answer to what you're asking, but kind of kind of both uh, when it comes to your question um we do put our you know cameras in military purchased bags um, but sometimes they are our choice and i can definitely buy my own bag of my choice if i want to and kind of use my own gear if i want to um which i you know usually do a lot i shot a lot of my early stuff um with bombers and nukes and stuff like that on my gh5 and a lot of stuff my helo some stuff like that. Um, I do have two or three videos in particular. I don't know if I ever uh, put up my helicopter video. Um, but yeah, again, super long explanation. Sorry it got so deep. But again, let's get back to this Coronet camera, which is awesome. And it's actually time, I think, to give away that Polaroid camera. But this guy is an actual 120. Um, this camera has a really neat story um, that has to do with uh, World War II and Nazis. So, if you want to see a video, and I'm sure it'll get demonetized, and I'm sure I won't be able to say Nazis in the title, but this video has to actually do with um, an American Navy mission and Nazis, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I, I actually, another reason I bought this guy was for the history behind it. And I think I might be lying to you. This actually, that story might actually go with the 120, which I think is correct. I think this is the camera that had to do with the Nazis, but, um, again, a really, really cool, um, story behind this guy. I'm going to try and shoot a roll of film through it. Uh, 120 film and we're gonna see how it turns out and I'll give you guys a bit of a history lesson of the cool things that this physical camera got to take pictures of because I've actually tracked it down tracked down a lot of the research and this camera got to shoot some really cool shit um, sorry for my language but that's true so Derek what's your other question um, Oh, yeah, with my last live stream. Um, so, yeah, photo bag 3000. Um, I think the bag itself is called um, the Low Pro um, Photo Classic 300 AW. If you type all that into the Google search, I'm sure you'll find exactly what you're looking for. So, it is a very good time. I hope. Lou and Shane and everybody else are still here and uh, Cabana, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I suck at pronouncing people's names. Let me get these brownie cameras out of the way real quick um, because we have a Polaroid camera to give away. Um, hopefully everyone is still here. All right, so let's talk about this guy real quick. Um, so this is a big old 
Polaroid LAN camera that I have, it's almost set up. There are Polaroid LAN cameras that this section right here is essentially like extendable and contractible bellows. This one actually happens to be um, a solid plastic body. Um, it's pretty neat. The viewfinder is... All right, Lou, I'm just giving you shit um, and harassing you while you edit. Um, so, yeah, this uh, this is super neat. This viewfinder is really cool. So I'm pretty sure it's made for portraits. When I look through the viewfinder, there's, you know, my square viewfinder. And then there's like a little red box. And I'm going to see if you guys can see it here on the camera. I just think this is a really neat feature. If I get this lined up, da, 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 da. can you guys see that little, you can see my, that bright green dot is from my camera. But if you can see, let me move my face over this way. There's a red dot, or excuse me, a red box over my eyeball. And it's right over my face right now. And I'm pretty sure that that's for lining up portraits. So let's say we're looking at my screen right here, and let's say we had a nice box right here, and that is your viewfinder, which is, oh man, video camera, or video about a camera that died. That is pretty sad. Was it your uh, Urban, Urban Outfitters camera that died? <laughs> Yeah, good luck, Derek. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining in. Whoops, hope that mic wasn't clipping. Uh, thanks for joining. Glad to have you, man. Um, hope to see you in the next video, and hope you can participate in one of our awesome handy-dandy photo challenges one of these days. But, um, yeah, so let's say... God, again, I'm doing everything backwards. Let's say here's my viewfinder. That little red box is right up there, up in the top, and I'm pretty sure that's for where you should put your face if you're taking a portrait. And that was a kind of neat feature that um, Polaroid happened to do with this little, it might be called a zip camera, little Polaroid land camera. Maybe zip is the model. Um, you can adjust the distance on top here. This is kind of neat. It has a little knob. Make sure you guys can see that. You can adjust the distance. Some little numbers in there you can mess around with. Oh man, that was your uh, that was your nice medium format that took the vertical horizontals and the horizontal verticals, wasn't it? Um, I really enjoyed the. Um, I think you went to a park in like Hoboken or something like that. That was pretty neat. But yeah, that stinks. I'm hoping there's going to be, you know, or at least there better be an entire funeral. And I expect a burial, I expect a cremation, and I expect you to go overboard. Um, yeah, I'd hope so. I have a couple camera bodies that are definitely not in a better place right now. <laughs> Again, yes, I a cremation. So I expect this to be like The Office. Um, if you've seen the episode where they uh, the bird dies and they have to do the burial. I expect uh, that level of quality and that level of funeral. And if there is not a eulogy, I'm unsubscribing. Just saying. So, yeah. Let's get back to this guy. This guy is cool. It has, look at this big old shutter button. That is awesome. I almost want to do one of those ASMR videos. Sorry, that's just fun. Um... I'm so excited that everything works with this thing. And then, uh, oh yeah, it better, again. So it needs to be like over the top, over the top, because when someone's over the top, you expect them to be over the top. I expect your video to be over the top. So it just needs to be completely asinine, and I will be excited. So let's open this beast up. Hopefully there's enough light on this camera. Um, What's kind of neat, there are directions on this back of this camera. Uh, it says, like, made in the UK, all sorts of cool directions, only use type 87 film. Let me do this in a way you guys can read this, and I can read it as well. 
So it says only use type 87 film, center the subject in the window. Um, it says it talks about that red dot. Um, there's a light that goes on. Ooh. Well, I don't have the flash for this. I'm sure the winner of this um, can probably pick up a flash or just shoot it without flash. That's what I planned on doing. Um, yeah, man, I'm excited for this video. <laughs> that's uh, that's probably going to be the highlight of my weekend if you release that this weekend. Um, talks about, let's see. Yeah, da, 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 da. Pull the white tab. Yeah, it sounds kind of neat. Um, yeah, don't use. All right. Yeah, it gives you the type of flash bulbs that you can buy with this thing. Um, again, I'll probably do a video on it. Um, but this is kind of neat. I'm excited for the winner to either have this as a really cool looking desk prop or some sort of something whoops it's kind of falling apart on me here but yeah to open this guy up you flip this little knob and then when you open it there's all sorts of craziness inside um you have i actually have one of the old um there's an actual 87 cartridge in here so whoever gets this will get this cartridge you can take the cartridge out again cartridge um the older ones uh this guy does not have a battery there are actually two AA, you know, 1.5 volt batteries that you can put in there. Um, and that does all the fun stuff. But yeah, I honestly don't know too much about this camera, so I will do a lot more research um, when I do the video about the other camera that I'm not giving away yet. Um, this is kind of neat. You just you have your old film cartridge, instant film, you slide it in there. Um, the top part here is what the image that gets exposed. I would be curious to know if there were a way to potentially load this. Maybe I'll do an experiment and see if I can load this with some 600 film. Because all of these instant cameras kind of work with the same concept of... You keep them unexposed to light, just like regular film. You expose it to light, and then to develop it, the developer is in that bottom part of your Polaroid. And when it comes out, it goes through, you can see it here, these little rollers, and that flattens. And again, maybe I'm making this all up, but I'm pretty sure this is how it works. It flattens that bottom part that people like to write little descriptions on. Um, the little bottom part of your Polaroid. Here's a picture of my doggo. Um, I always keep pupper pictures on hand, but it flattens this part right here. You can see how it's kind of thicker down here. Um, if I get the light just right, you can see it's a little blobby at the bottom. It flattens it out. Let's see, 600 is a different size. Well, maybe, maybe, um, let me, let's see something real quick. I'm gonna mess around and break this thing before I give it away on accident. So, ooh, yeah. Um, discontinued. When I read discontinued, what I hear is it's still out there because somebody like me hoarded it. And let's see, yeah, so. You are absolutely right. This, um, the 600 film is about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters larger than this cartridge. You can kind of see the edges of the cartridge. Just a little bit big. And it's about that much too big. You can kind of see the overlap. So I don't think you're going to be able to over, yeah, you'd have to trim the sides of one of these while it was still raw and yeah expired film only yeah basically um i guess the best you could find was some film made in 2006 but again said winner um i'm sure could be have some ingenuity and find something um 
I, yeah, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure the winner could find something. Maybe he and or she has some connections and or um, let me answer a text message and I will really drag this out and then I will answer the winner immediately after because I like playing games. Da, 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 da. Give me one second. Let me grab some coffee, really drag this out. All right, so if everybody's ready, and I can't afford to do a drum roll, so let me just double check here on these numbers. I'm about to shut my phone off. Um, where did I save this Excel spreadsheet? Just in case you guys don't believe me, and I gotta show you the numbers breakdown. Um, give away, give away, give away. Where the heck did I put it? Well, this is frustrating and embarrassing. Let's go to my documents. I would apologize, but no. Ah, 10K leaderboard. Here it is. Let me open this up real quick. Da, 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 da. No, I don't want to go to the app store. Go away. All right, so I have to say, um, oh yeah, I'm good at suspense. If only I could do that in like short films. So let's go to my um, my leaderboard here. Check out my screen and I will do a quick take a look at my display real quick oh come on yeah I apologize this is actually being frustrating right now screen capture yep show me my screen capture dang it do, do, do. that's not what I wanted all right so here we go I'm gonna transition over to my leaderboard right here and let's see if you guys can see this so these were I kind of did um, throughout months of and um, I didn't end up adding the last photo challenge into this because it ended up not making a difference because um, it would have been down to like a point and this person had already won by like three points um, and I actually never even added this person's live stream points in, and they were in almost all of my live stream points, and they ended up winning essentially, um, this isn't the final document, I don't think, but this individual ended up winning by a ridiculous amount of points. Um, when I did you know, the final math, this isn't the final, but this does have the actual accurate, um, oops, this does have the accurate amount of, um, or the accurate winner leaderboard. So the winner of the, now let's drag this over here. I'm gonna get rid of this table. Go away. Nope, sure, close enough. Um, let's see, how far can I go over? Yep. So, the winner of this Polaroid camera is good old Sweet Lou Photography. So this ended up being the final breakdown, and these were the top participants on the channel. I think you guys can see that right here. And again, like I said, this was before I even added in um, Lou's points for um, being in the live stream. So he ended up he was in all the live streams. He ended up winning the um, first quarter participation points for this giveaway, and that's what the 8K giveaway was based off of. Um, let me get a more interesting screen up here so you guys don't have to stare at this ugly desktop. Um, 
But yeah, so Lou won the first, uh, this first camera. And again, don't worry, there are going to be nine more giveaways. And I know Shane has definitely been participating a lot on this channel, so I wouldn't be surprised if you won maybe one of the next ones. Don't know yet, don't know how the numbers turn out. But um, for everyone that's watching this live, and for everyone that will be watching this in the future, I think that I would like to let me know if you guys have any better ideas because I'm absolutely open to suggestions. But I think maybe we should do um, the next giveaway, you know, just based on maybe challenge participation so we can get some more people, you know, participating in these challenges, um, some edits, some things like that. So Lou, I'm glad you showed up to this one. I was excited and it was hard not to say something when you were the first person that popped up in the chat. But yeah, Lou won this handy dandy little, uh, actually this thing's freaking huge. This is not little. This thing is a beast. But Lou, I'm actually, I'm glad you won this one um, because I think you would be the person that would be able to find the film that goes to this. And I would feel bad giving this to someone and them not necessarily being able to use it. So I think between you and um, your Lomo uh, Lomography partners um, and between you and Jacob and you know everybody, all the connections you have, I think you could probably hunt down at least one pack of this film. Even if it is expired, I think it would be interesting. So... Um, yeah, what I'm going to do is offline, I'll get your address. I'm going to, uh, actually, I've, I think I have your address somewhere from, actually, let's do, let's have a little nostalgia collaboration here. Uh, I know there are some other people watching, but Shane, I can see you right now, so I'm going to mention your name. Um, if you haven't seen Lou's uh, and my collaboration video from Photo Plus, um, I have, I have our Game Boy film right here. I keep it right in my photo desk. Um, when we did our collaboration, um, I've been meaning to give Dave his portrait at work, but he's been out with some family stuff. Um, but yeah, I have all of our, our Game Boy film that we printed out, um, from our last collab. So again, if you haven't, um, checked out our awesome collab on Lou's channel um, to see how we got to, or how he, he did 99.9% .9 of the work on this. If you want to see how he got to the process of these awesome Game Boy um, little camera films, here's a portrait of me that he took. I got one of me and I got one of Lou right next to each other, which is pretty cool. I hope you guys can see this. Um, there's me giving my thinker pose right there. I hope you guys can see that. And then here's one I took of Lou. These actually turned out really awesome. Um, this was a blast. Um, that was honestly some of the most fun I've had, you know, out just doing street photography. This was, I believe, a panning shot. All you can see is the streaks from the cars. But again, those were shot on a Game Boy Color. I will leave you guys with an image of a donut, a nice, uh, uh, what's it, chiroscuro style, Google that, I don't know how to spell it, um, looking image of a donut, but yeah, that was a blast. Lou managed to find a Game Boy printer and a Game Boy, you know, the ink that goes with the printer, however, or toner, whatever it was that made that work. So again, I'm glad that he found that and I feel like he would probably be the best person for this camera to go to especially because I think he um, could make a cool video out of it. Maybe you give it a nice funeral, maybe you put it on your desk, maybe you find some film that goes with it and you just have some fun. Maybe I'm sure you could find, um, there's a little flash unit that goes in here. Let's see if you can see that in the light a little bit better. Um, but the flash goes in here. There's a little diffuser right there. And then you can, as I showed earlier, you twist your um, shutter button 
and that lightens or darkens um, has something to do with the flash. I'm not 100% sure how that works. I'd be lying if I said I did. So I'll let Lou figure that out. I'll figure it out in another video. Um, oh yeah, that bagel was bitching. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, has a neat little carrying strap too. I, I don't know what the deal is with this handle. Um, kind of weird, but again, um, yeah. I will, Lou, I will be giving you um, a box with this guy in it, and then I will also be shooting a roll or two of just a regular 35 mil and sending that to you for our double exposure um, video that we were talking about. Um, just haven't had time to do it, to be honest. So, um, coffee time. I wanna say thanks to Lou and Shane and everybody else that's been, you know, a super huge part of this channel for making that happen. And if I can do some little things to uh, give back to you guys for being awesome, um, definitely going to be giving more of these away. And it's going to be hard to see, but I have an entire shelf behind me, right down there, of more Polaroids to be giving away. So. I have a couple more of these um, bigger cameras that I may or may not give away just because I don't want necessarily someone who can't find the film um, to be stuck with something they can't use. I think, again, lose um, resources and ingenuity will definitely find something very interesting to do with this camera. Um, but yeah, I'll be shooting you that camera pretty soon, as soon as I can. Um, and then we'll be getting ready for that 8.5K giveaway pretty soon. Uh, we'll pick out another one of those interesting cameras back there, probably one of the 600 models. Um, but yeah, uh, again, thank you guys for coming out to the live stream. I think that's about it. Um, I'm going to pack up for a hike tomorrow. It's supposed to be a nice big snowstorm. Um, yeah. That's about it. I'm going to do, um, maybe I will shoot a couple rolls of, probably send you a couple rolls of Fuji. Um, I'm not sure if I should maybe shoot them a stop under just so you have some room for exposure. Um, see how that goes. I've never, um, I don't think I've ever actually done a roll of double exposures and actually developed it. I think I've done one or two rolls of double exposures and then never actually um, gotten it developed and saw how it turned out. So I'm a little bit ignorant, but we're going to find out together, I guess. Um, yeah, thank you for all of that. Hopefully, um, oh yeah, I guess I won't be. Maybe I should delete some subscribers just so I can get on your, uh, your next video. Um, eh, it's actually kind of tempting. Um, Get rid of some uh, the spam people and the spam bots and the auto troll followers that end up not really participating in the channel. But that is a part of the YouTubes and not really much you can do about it. But um, yeah, I wish there was an app that would let you get rid of the bots and stuff that YouTube ends up cleaning out anyway, and then you just realize YouTube did a cleaning and you lost, you know, 400 subscribers out of nowhere because YouTube decided to clean your channel and you had some dead subscribers in your closet. I probably shouldn't say that. There is a potential out of the eight and a half thousand people that follow me that maybe somebody died. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I am not the most politically correct person, if you can't tell. Being in the military gives me kind of an um, interesting sense of humor. Um, yeah, hey, um, what's happening? Welcome to the channel. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a 10K giveaway, working my way up to 10K, and instead of giving something away at 10K, which I will be doing... Um, I figured let's give away cameras on the way to 10K. So we have kind of this 10K giveaway journey that we're all on together. Anybody that is watching this, just know that 
um, when I do count up comments and stuff about activity and stuff, um, the people that are like, give me camera, please. Um, that's spam. So again, I am way off topic, but um, yeah, we will be doing, um, for everybody that's kind of newer in the stream, we'll be doing plenty more of these live streams. Um, I was trying to do one once a week that's just kind of time consuming, especially, <clears throat> excuse me, when I started like the blog as well. And I tried doing more than one post a week. That got a little bit, um, got to be a little bit much doing a live stream and a video and a blog all at once. So, um, yeah, just uh, taking it day by day and seeing how it goes. But um, we have that 8.5 giveaway coming up soon. And it's actually coming up pretty quick. So who knows, maybe I'll do like a live stream, you know, an actual live drawing. And I'll let you guys know like when the stream's coming up like a month ahead of time. So we'll do it on that date. See how many people we can get to show up. Put all your names in a shoebox. Draw a name out of a shoebox. And maybe that will be the 8.5 k follower giveaway we'll see if you guys like that idea i think i might end up actually doing that because that'll be easier than trying to jam you know five or six photo challenges in the next two or three weeks which are going to be extremely busy for me and i know it's going to be difficult with this whole uh global pandemic thing going on um i don't want to be you know forcing people to leave their home to do photography um Maybe I'll do some indoor photography challenges. Maybe. Um, so yeah, I think that is um, about it for this video. Again, congrats to Lou who won the first Polaroid. There are nine more left, so don't be discouraged if you didn't win this time. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for being a part of this challenge. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, yeah, just huge thanks to you guys because you're all awesome. And I mean, I would do this if I had one subscriber because I just enjoy, you know, giving back to the community. I learned so much on YouTube and I know YouTube is just a massive resource and it's great when people can, you know, get on YouTube and even if you're not making a penny, people still, you know, give away thousands of uh, hours, hours of their time to teach people on YouTube and it's helped me learn a lot of techniques, so hopefully I'm helping other people learn. I'm just saying thank you for being, you know, massive part of this community, and hopefully we do some cool stuff in the future. So that is all for this video. I think I'm going to wrap this up. Um, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, as every YouTube-er person tells you to do. And if you're new, be sure to subscribe. So thank you guys again. I will be cutting this live stream right now y'all are awesome and how i end every video is no matter what you're doing the gear doesn't matter the nothing nothing matters just get out go shoot go practice go have some damn fun with photography and just enjoy it so until next time get out and go shoot Yes, I want to end the stream. Come on. Now I'm awkwardly sitting here still recording, and I just want to end the stream. Yes, YouTube.